King Culture presents A Plan for Longevity, a health and wellness initiative for men. Why health? Why now? At King Culture, we are equipping men to become selfless leaders. And part of selfless leadership is developing a strategy that ensures not only your well-being, but the well-being of those you're responsible for. Do you have a personal plan for longevity? Have you given any thought to your health plan or the health of your loved ones? Where does health and wellness fall on your understanding of manhood? I'm Dominic Perviance, and on today's episode, I sat down with a group of guys to discuss how they prioritize or don't prioritize their health. You want to be well, you want to do well, but tell people that you don't eat meat or something like that and watch how they respond, right? Oh, why am I not taking care of my body? Because I'm in survival mode. Mm. I'm thinking of everything outside of me. It's an even mental reprogramming that has to take place. If you're listening to the cues that your body is giving, we are like well-oiled machines and our bodies will tell us exactly what we need. Stay tuned. The King Culture Podcast starts now. Thanks again for every, everyone being here. For those of you who don't know, um, our organization is called King Culture. King Culture is an organization whose mission is to equip men to be selfless leaders. And part of our mission, one of our core principles is uh, having equipping men to be, have a plan for longevity. And so a plan for longevity for us is being able to make sure that you know, we all have missions and ambitions and desires and things we want to accomplish in life. But if, number one, we're not connected to the generation that came before us and we're not preparing the generation that comes after us, whatever we do in this lifetime is not going to last. Mm. Yeah, nah, it's the very first thing that came to mind for me. I was like, yeah, um, I, from a very early age, I think, thought about longevity and maybe not in the best way. I remember um, one was just one year. Uh, my brother and I were starting to get into we were starting to get into trouble, and um, we had we had done something, and my mom set us down, and she had this conversation with us, and she said, "Look, uh, if y'all keep doing the stuff y'all doing, um, you're gonna find yourself in a situation where I won't be able to help you, even if I even if I wanted to." And what she was talking about was prison. Yeah. And man, she only had to have that conversation with me one time. Um, just because growing up, you saw, you know, you saw how commonplace prison was. Um, so though, from my background of the guys that I grew up with, I might legitimately be the only person who's never been locked up. And that for me, got me thinking about long term um, in that sense and I think the way that I've dealt with that you know I've, I've had to correct this a little bit but um, man just always being careful just always trying to be careful and always trying to make sure that if that I had another destination in mind yeah. you know if I'm not gonna end up there I gotta find I gotta find somewhere else for myself to end up um, and that's a little bit of how I've always thought about the future or having, having something. Probably not the best yeah, reference, a yeah. little limited, but yeah. It's good stuff. Anybody else? Um, when I hear longevity, I think about like uh, career-wise because I'm, I'm obviously in music and a lot of time people look at music and they say, oh, it's just music. You're not gonna make another uh, music. And I'm finally getting the the chain rolling with the music. And I feel like the whole process of coming up with music, the networking, meeting people, uh, the events that you go to, I feel like that's part of your longevity ahead of time before you even know it because those are gonna be the same people who are gonna be in the industry later on down the day when everybody's, when you're looking for work and then you're gonna run into that friend, that one person that you met a few years ago, I feel like that, that, that big, plays a big part in your longevity too, career-wise, music-wise. My perspective on longevity has definitely evolved over time. So I think by, by default, I'm, I'm a very, I know people struggle with being present. I'm a very present person. <laughs> so <laughs> I, don't, I'm, I don't dwell much on the past mm -hmm. and I don't do too much future casting, mm -hmm. if you will. And um, 
I think in a lot of ways that served me well, but uh, in many ways I, I had to have a shift, right? I had to understand, okay, you know, yes, you are where you are for a moment. You touch uh, the people that you interact with for that moment and then and it is what it is and the Lord will use that however he sees fit, right? But um, when you approach it that way and you, you don't even have a plan for longevity for yourself, uh, then what does it look like to maintain lasting relationships where you get to see the fruits of those relationships and the Lord doing his work in his people in a way that they connect? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I, I, um, yeah, so this question actually hits home. So I was telling uh, Marcus and Savant earlier that at the top of the year, I lost my grandmother. She's 95 years old, lost her January 25th. And that was earth shattering because it's just like that was my mother, so on and so forth. But it made me really reflect on like what is life, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we like, at least for myself, you look at it as a vapor of like you're going on this journey, you have a purpose, you're fighting to accomplish all these things. But then you wake up one day and your life is just about done, right? Either you're immobile and you can no longer take care of yourself and be active and or you're in a space where um, you're just looking at the end of your road. And at 17, I couldn't see life at 21. At 21, I couldn't see life at 25. And at 25, I realized I was like, oh, wait, like this is actually grace that I've made it here. Mm -hmm. And like, as I approach 30, I, I sit here and, and, like, and I'm like, well, well, God, like, were you old when you, when you died? When, when, when Christ died, was he old or was he young? Um, and at 33, it's like, well, you know, if you were to lose somebody at 33, it would be devastating. But Christ fulfilled his purpose and he rose, right? So like, I guess legacy and longevity for me now is tied to purpose. Um, and like once I fulfill my purpose, God will call me on. And I, I think that gives me a, a, a greater sense of peace because I no longer have to, to your point, shoot for the moon and try to figure out what the next 40 years are gonna look like. And I also don't have to feel the shame of the past like it's slowing me down as I try to move on. So I think it's, it's been a, a good wake up call, a rough one, but a good one to, to say the least. That's good. Yeah, it seems like in the past year, you know, COVID notwithstanding, I mean, we lost people like Kobe, we lost Chadwick Bozeman. Like, you know, when you see people that are young, like, you know, they're close enough to us that we can, we sort of can see ourselves in them. And just to realize that you, you never know how much life you have left and you're trying to figure out how to fulfill whatever purpose you have in that time it becomes you know it becomes it becomes real to the, you know when you're young you're just not thinking about it and so um <clears throat> one of the things that we're trying to we're, we want to focus on today in terms of longevity is health and why um why is it so difficult for men um you know, we're not, you know, most of your health challenges start happening as you get older, as you get into your 40s and 50s, but it's predicated on the decisions you're making now. And so if we can figure out how to equip men with what they need to make better decisions where their health is concerned when they're younger, when they get older, it ensures that they have greater longevity, they have the energy and the, um, the health and, and welfare to actually be there for the people they care about. But uh, perhaps a great way to start is, why is this so difficult for men? Why don't we think about this? Why is this not important to us? Why don't we prioritize this? And why do we prioritize everything else but our health? In some respects, it feels like it has a lot to do with like socialization. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was thinking about this, um, Jay-Z has this line where he says, we all screwed because we, 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 we never had the tools. Yeah. And that reminded me, um, when I was in college, this might sound wild, but I, um, it didn't take me until college to recognize what my body actually felt like when I was hungry. Mm. I, I always thought, oh, if I'm hungry, my, that means my stomach will hurt. But I didn't realize, like, nah, uh, there, there are more signs that, you, that you're hungry. There is your fogginess in the brain, yeah. uh, like overall weakness in the body, stuff like that. I never knew that. 
And so I'm walking around, not having energy, my mood is, is off, I'm just, and, um, and it, did, it didn't die. I had somebody, I was explaining what was going on. I had someone tell me like, and it felt so, I felt so silly. They was like, yo, you need to eat. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, whoa. So I eat and I start to feel that, that change. And I'm starting to realize, wait a minute, um, there's a whole aspect of myself that I could, that I'm not experiencing mm -hmm. because I'm not properly taking care of my body. And I, in reflecting on that, I'm like, oh, why am I not taking care of my body? Cause I'm in survival mode. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of everything outside of me. You know, I'm in college, it's life or death. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about eating or taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, yo, you need to make the grade. You need to study or else you're gonna end up back yeah. in some of them places, you know, you see others. Yeah, it, it seems like, um, you know, especially when we're young, we're prioritizing, you know, being successful, fulfilling our purpose. And, you know, health doesn't, isn't that front, it's not at the front of your mind. You're not really thinking about it. Um, what else? Why, why else do you? Just to relate, I'm, I think I might be the, I believe yeah, I'm the youngest. Yes, you, you I'm definitely, <laughs> yeah. Um, I work at the studio now and it took me for a long time, that was always my goal. So after I accomplished my goal, now I feel like I gotta work extra hard sometimes to go, to go at it because it's, a lot of people don't get this opportunity. Yeah. So now that I got the opportunity, sometimes I catch myself and it's like, bro, it's one o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. you haven't eaten yet. Yeah. And sometimes, like you said, we get mad or we, we just get confused about something, the fogginess in the brain. It could be little stuff like math or something real quick, quick math that you normally can do. But because you haven't eaten for eight hours, your body is not ready for what? Yeah. So, so as the youngest person, I, that's something I definitely need to work on more, mm. for sure. Not to mention you up at one o'clock in the morning. You ain't <laughs> but I work at the studio. <laughs> I work at the Perfect. studio, so, so that's, that's our late nights. Our, I, I didn't leave that to four o'clock this morning, actually. Yeah, see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, late nights. Yeah. Late so, nights, early morning. With a lot of trial and error and research and, you know, experimentation on myself, I feel like I'm in that place now. But Marcus started to touch on it a little bit. There, there's a lack, and you talk about men, and I'll be more specific to black men, right? There's a lack of some information generationally being handed down. Yeah. Um, which means that th there's a certain things about self-care, diet and fitness that, you know, we, we, we do fitness for fun, for pleasure, for recreation, yeah. right? N not really making a connection that, oh, this is actually like good for my body and this is something that I should continue into, you know, perpetuity, right? But I think there's the lack of information. And then you asked, um, why, why is it such a challenge for, for men to get into? And I think that, you know, there's even some, some stigma around being uh, health conscious, which is weird, right? Mm -hmm. You, I, you want, you want to be well, you want to do well, but, um, tell people that you don't eat meat or something like that and watch how they respond, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I can't, immediately you get, you get someone who starts to explain why they can't, why they won't, what they won't do. And it's like, no, nah, it's, not, it's not about you. This, I, this is a personal choice, it's, it's better for me. And I think lastly, um, as you, just to answer that, the specific question, uh, right, do I feel equipped? Are we equipped? Once again, Marcus hit on it. If, if you're listening to the cues that your body is giving, we are like well oil machines and our bodies will tell us exactly what we need, right? Low on nutrients, um, deficient in certain things, deficient in activity, you feel it. And so I've learned over the years what my body needs. When I go too long of a period without being active, I'm not myself. My wife points that out. She's like, you, you need to go for a run. You need to go to the gym. You need to do something because you're moping around here and you're irritable. Yeah. Dom, you point out something interesting. Um, you know when you're not yourself. Like, what are those triggers? When are those points where you know that there's something wrong? And how do you respond when you know that I'm not where I should be? At least I don't feel where I should be in terms of my health. 
So I, I think even before you get to the triggers, you got to get to having permission to experience the triggers, Come right? Come on, man. Um, and I feel like sometimes we as men, particularly black men, I have you brought that up, just don't, we're not allowed, right? Or, or there's, there is no like outright like, hey, you can feel this way, you can feel anything other than anger or lust, right? Like it's just like, yeah. hey, oh, whatever it is, you just kind of got to ride with it. So if you're feeling, if, can you, even if you say that, I'm, can, you, can you repeat that? <laughs> can you can you just repeat that? Uh, I don't know what I said. So essentially, men are not really allowed to feel anything other than anger and lust, right? And I think uh, black men of any age often need permission to do that sometimes, right? And sometimes from other men. Um, yeah. like it's, it's okay to feel like if you feel off, like what's going on in that, that consciousness, like I, now, so I'm Jamaican and I have an old Jamaican father, love him to death, but that man will wait till like he has a ruptured spleen before he's like, Hey, I need help. And even then he'll hold his leg and kind of walk as if he's okay. Right. You know, just like holding himself together. And I think we as men need permission. And I think once we have permission to explore our triggers, um, sometimes they, they're subtle, right? Sometimes it's just like, you know, like, I feel dizzy sometimes. While I feel dizzy, it may not even be because I haven't eaten, it's because I'm just stressing. Yeah. So like, what are, what are the factors that are leading into the overall health? But um, for me, it starts with permission, for sure. And how do you, how do you respond when you, when you feel you're off? So yeah, uh, no, I was just saying, it's, it's, uh, a lot of times it's hard to get there because of the messages that we internalize that says, hey man, only thing you need to be thinking about health-wise is are you strong enough to beat up another man? or dunk on somebody, or do you have the, the energy or, uh, to, to have, you know, to, for sex? Are you, are you, can you do sex and can you do it profusely? Um, now I say it's really important, but if we can get past all of that and recognize the triggers, the question you asked was, well, what do we do then? I think for the sake of this conversation, it would be, able to, it would be nice to say something dope, like, oh, I do this, I do this. But to be honest, man, it's, that can be a whole nother level of frustration because mm -hmm. you sit in that and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, what am I, what am I really supposed to eat? Am I supposed to go, am I supposed to go lift weights? And you know, you gotta, it's a whole, it's an even mental reprogramming that's to take place. I don't like the doctor, honestly. I don't <laughs> like nobody touching all on me and checking to make sure and all, I don't like all that. Yeah. Honestly, that's just me. So just the privacy, the intimate, you know, I don't, that's just not the type of person yeah. I am. I don't mm -hmm. like, I like my bubble. I don't like when people come yeah. into my bubble. Even if they're here to help, yeah. uh, even in when we're not talking about health in, yeah. in general. Mm -hmm. uh, when people come to help, a lot of times it's block it out. I don't hmm. Over the years, I've gotten better about responding to, to signs, right? As they pop up or issues and going, yeah, you know what? Let me just go get checked, right? There are things that you have going on that, that don't show symptoms. For example, mm -hmm. right, there's something called FH. It's familial hypercholesterolemia. Hyper That's a mouthful, right? And what that means is genetically passed down to you is that your liver functions in a way where it just creates too much cholesterol. So, mm -hmm. your, so your cholesterol is at a, you know, astronomical level three, four times the normal cholesterol level, right? Mm -hmm. And no amount of diet or exercise fixes that particular malady, right? So there is no shortcut or no way around that. You can't, we in an era of self-diagnosis because we have so much internet access, you can just go on yeah. Google and go, yeah. this, is, this is what I'm experiencing, now tell me how to fix it. Yeah. And that's just one example of like many that we can't fix on our own and we need to seek out help for, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I love my doctor for my annual. And any other, like any other time, I do not go to a doctor. And I think even beyond that, I just have this notion in my head that I gotta keep pushing. I don't know where it came from, I don't know who told it to me, but like, I could, you know, I've like dislocated my shoulder, right? And it's just like, nah, you know, like, walk tough it, it through, pop it back in, <laughs> walk, walk through it the off, right, you know what I mean? Like, or, <laughs> You know, I've like injured myself in the gym doing a deadlift before, right? And like pull, like hurrying in my, my back. And I was just like, you know what? I'll be okay. You know what I mean? Let me just get the foam roller, figure it out. And like, I'll walk in pain. And I'll like, I'm so used to pain that I'm just like, I can normalize uh, pain that I shouldn't be like, hmm, I could, I could deal with this. And I, 
unless it's like an extreme situation where I'm literally falling out on the floor and I can't help myself, that is like probably the only time I would go to a doctor or seek medical help um, beyond just an annual checkup. And I just do the annual because, you know, I just travel a lot. So I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me do that one thing to check the list and say I did it, but I'm not actually, again, giving myself that permission to, to slow down enough. It's, but, but it's interesting, you actually, have, yeah. you actually go to a doctor it's every year. that you do that. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. dope. I, yeah. you know, and I, it's dope, man. I, I appreciate what the brother's saying, too, because it is that message that you got that you got to keep going. I think it's, man, ain't no money at the doctor's office. You know, mm -hmm. if I take a day off work or kind of to what you were saying earlier, then I might miss, I might miss that, that game-changing yeah. opportunity or whatever. So, um, Honestly, that's probably what honestly goes on in my head, yeah. even when I experience symptoms or even think about the fact that something might be going on beneath the surface that isn't even sim doesn't show symptoms. How well do you manage your health? We want you to be equipped to make better decisions that lead to better long-term health outcomes. Visit kingculture.org and fill out your personal health inventory and start building a plan for longevity today. When I think about how all this ties into like manhood and leadership, it just comes back to just the foundation, foundational principle of like as a leader and as a man, I have responsibility that I need to, um, I need to own. And I have a responsibility for myself, I have a responsibility for my family, and that includes my immediate family, but also as we talked about here, um, even a greater emphasis realizing it's a responsibility for um, my parents. And then Antoine, I think you did a great job talking about how uh, even getting me to open my eyes even more, realizing it's a responsibility even for my friends and my peers that may not uh, be thinking about their how leadership and planning for longevity and all those sort of things. And so I think being responsible to have a plan for longevity is important. And then I think also uh, kind of evangelizing that message around to others is a part of it as well because we're supposed to not just be looking out for ourselves but you talk about selflessness like we need to out of in love look out for other people as well and a part of that is just even again having these conversations sharing this information asking these questions challenging where a challenge needs to take place um and i think that if, if we're able to do that then you know we can see the types of outcomes and flourishing we're ultimately after yeah yeah and, and i would add to that too in terms of like the importance of this conversation and just legacy for men, especially black men, you know, like it's already a lot that we're dealing with mentally, trying to navigate life, navigate manhood, navigate these decisions in life. And things like longevity and legacy doesn't necessarily come up a lot, you know, because you're in the thick of the day trying to live and figure it out that you don't necessarily have a lot of time to really step above the fray and see out two or three generations and speak to that. Like, how, what am I doing now that's gonna echo in 30, 40 years from now? And how can I start making decisions like that? And I think that changes your lens. It changes how you navigate, it changes the decisions you make, it changes who you connect to and you know how you do life. It changes how you treat your body because I wanna be around to see the grands and the great grands. Um, my granddad did an excellent job of that. That man was a man about legacy. Every time, every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, every anniversary he and uh, my grandmother would have, he would sit us down in the living room and call everybody in the room, get, get your uncle, get your auntie, get the nephews in here. And he would give the same speeches over and over again about the importance of family, the importance of legacy. Like he talked about legacy when had a third grade education. And so I saw that empowered me like, okay, Toyn, you got to think out. Like I don't even have kids, but I'm thinking like I'm using invisible children almost. Like this is what I got to start thinking about and planning for. And I think as more black men step up from just the thick of life and just trying to navigate the thick of life and start seeing ahead, man, what would it look like 100 years from now? How would the black boys and black girls be down the road? Because dads like us in the room, I don't have kids yet, but in the room are thinking about these things and planning ahead. And we can then be the face on the wall that that was great, great, great granddaddy that thought about us. And because of that, these things are different. So I feel like it's all, these are like different ingredients that we're discussing, but it's so important that we talk about it and challenge other guys to step up to that plate. Because if you're only living for you, you're really like, 
missing such a greater purpose and greater call. Like you literally are leading a legacy with your last name. And as a man, I think it's a responsibility and a charge. And it should be something exciting to do because I'm excited about it, you know. Yeah, um, just thinking about the scriptures on how the, the scriptures said as as a man, we're, we're the head of the household, you know, just thinking about having all that weight on us as a man to lead in the proper way. Um, but then also to, you know, think about the future, think about, you know, how you're going to lead your family, think about how you're going to lead your kids and be, you know, active in the community. But, um, you know, um, providing God to give you that wisdom to think long term to make sure that you know, things are taken care of in the correct manner as well. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening to this edition of the King Culture Podcast. For more information on a plan for longevity, visit us online at kingculture.org and fill out your personal health inventory. Follow us on social media at King Culture Inc. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.